Hello, this is Paul from Now Gamer. And this is Adam. And this is the inaugural episode of Indecent Exposure a Ooh. video. Oh, already. <laughs> um, it's a video series we're going to be doing every fortnight. We're going to introduce you, hopefully, to some indie games that you may not know about or you might have heard of, and we'll hopefully give you a bit of a closer look at them. So, without further ado, the first game we're looking at is Gang Beasts. Now, this is one a lot of people probably heard of because this was at Rest yeah. um, last weekend. Where, um, and uh, yeah, a lot of people have been playing it, a, bit, a lot of videos on YouTube, but it is actually pretty brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we've been playing it with four of us in the office, and it is really funny, isn't it? It's a great laugh. It's hilarious. Yeah. It's one that's probably better suited to local co-op. Um, but uh, yeah, but it's just it's just fun. It's yeah. Just, a video game that's, that's all it is it seems like um local multiplayer as well it's something that's obviously gone by the wayside a bit of online multiplayer but you're getting a lot of indie games now sort of. a lot more of them doing these days like uh, towerfall and nidhogg they're all kind of focused on this kind of yeah. local multiplayer yeah this this uh this game is still an alpha so anyone can download it for free from the website so if you can get people who will play it then it's definitely worth a go we'll put a link in the description so you yeah, can grab put it. A link in the description yeah i mean it'd be, it'd be interesting to see how the code goes with developing it because i don't you don't want it to get too much more complex because part of the appeal is that it's a bit unwieldy isn't it yeah what do you think they could add to it then I don't know. I don't even want them to add skins because I like the little morph dudes. Yeah, no, I do like that. I More like... levels, better levels. Yeah. I mean, we these ones in the video are pretty good, but uh, there's a few boring ones in there. So power ups. No, keep it pure. Yeah. Just just to explain briefly for anyone who doesn't know anything about it, you've got you can punch with each hand and you can hold on to people. Yeah. Um, so it's possible to, for example, hold someone with one hand and punch them in the face with the other. It can be quite brutal as well, actually. It is quite brutal, yeah. <laughs> Uh, all sorts of accidental stuff happens that makes you laugh, so yeah, yeah, it's a cool one. Yeah, it's good. If you've got a, a bunch of friends you can get around, um, have them. It works with very, very various different controllers, so if yeah. you have USB, uh, DualShock 4 or Xbox 360 controller, it'll work with that. Uh, get a bunch of friends, guys, guys around, or girls, doesn't matter, um, and uh, yeah, just enjoy it. Now this one is what we would call in the office a poll game. It's all about narrative and things like that. Um, Ether One, come on Paul, I haven't played it, I have no idea what it is. So the, the setup for the game is that you're a restorer. Um, there's a company called Ether who tried to help restore people's memories. Right. So your job as a restorer is to go into people's minds and try and find um, items of significance to them and so on to try and fix their memory. Right. So the, the, uh, I haven't finished the game yet, but I've, I've quite a substantial way through. As far as I can tell, you're, there's one person whose memory you're in throughout the game, trying to work out. Um, it's basically a, a first-person adventure game. Right, um, okay. So, so, Gone Home. Sort of like Gone Home, but there's more to it in terms of being a game. It has got that element where you find notes um, around that you can read that you know add to the story. But there are actually puzzles in it, there are things to do. Um, something which they've, they've done... Quite, which is quite clever, I think. Um, so that you, there are some puzzles that you have to solve towards the beginning, but later on, it doesn't um, gate you from the rest of the game if you cu if you can't work out the puzzles. Okay. Basically, if you, have you played To the Moon before? I have, yes. Okay, you know, in th in that game, you just basically find items and you get a bit more story and you advance. Yeah, yeah. That is in this game. That's part of the game. There's there's these um, red ribbons that you can just find, uh, just explore the area. They're easy to find. That will progress the story. But there are quite complicated puzzles to solve that you can do if you want that will give you extra snippets and give you more. Yeah. So if you find one that you get stuck on, you can just keep going. Um, I think that what allows us to do with that is the, the puzzles, um, they are quite smart and they are some of them are quite difficult. Uh, it, it doesn't really, it never explains to you what to do. Um, you will just find things around. It can take quite a long time to work out what you're meant to be doing, but they are very satisfying for that reason. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I really like it. Uh, I think it's really well done. What's, it uh, what, what's you? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's <laughs> certainly a poor game. Um, what's unique about this then? What what uh, will draw people and what will get people interested? Um, I don't think. I, th I don't think it's unique and stuff. As I say, I think it's got stuff that you've seen in other games before. Like I think people that like Gone Home, To the Moon, story heavy games will like yeah. it. But I think there's also something there for people who do like you know classic puzzle games um 
I mean, there's not that many first-person puzzle games around, um, so I guess it's kind of unique in, in that sense. Yeah. It does feel I have to, it does feel uh, very distinctly English, uh, which makes it a little different as well. Oh, well, you can get a tax uh, break now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You can get a tax break. I think that's the only reason they've done that. Yeah, for uh, <laughs> pigeons and things like that. Yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, it's been in. Uh, it's one of a game I saw sort of a year or so ago. It was in development. Uh, it's just come out on Steam. I think it's one of those games that people will know if this is start, their type of thing. And how much is it? It's uh, 14.99 on Steam. Okay, you can get it now. Yeah. So this one is Goat Simulator. It's you... another one that people have probably seen a lot of recently. Yeah, um, it's one of those videos, a uh, game sorry, that naturally lends itself to YouTube videos and so on, which I think is part of why quite a lot of people have heard about it. Um, it's basically a, a joke game. I mean, the, the developers haven't been shy about that. Um, you're a goat, you run around and you smash stuff. You get points for smashing stuff. It's basically a goat equivalent of Surgeon Simulator. Yeah, it's that type, yeah, that type of thing. Um, so you've got a headbutt button. You can uh, put it in slow motion. There's a ragdoll button. Um, I mean, the, the fun of it really is just sort of running around the area and finding the, the little... Um, secret areas and stuff. There's a uh, um, anti-gravity area where you can do multiple 360 spins with your goat if you want to. Uh, See, now for me, I like skate. You know, I like the ragdoll effects and games yeah. like this. I, I find them hilarious when they happen. But I don't like games built around like skate. You can do it and you can do your little video clips and it's brilliant and it's hilarious and all that. But I don't know. It just seems a bit much to buy a game just to be a bit silly. Yeah, well, it's it's six ninety nine on Steam. Um, I personally wouldn't recommend people paying full price for it, but it's gonna you know it's gonna be in a sale at some point, and you know it's worth a laugh for uh, for an hour or so. Yeah. So yeah. it's one of those things that you know just if you're not sure about it, just wait for it till it's in the sale, and it might be worth a go. I mean, it's not going to keep you occupied in the long term. I think that they're relying um, on Steam Workshop to an extent to give people stuff to do because it's, it's not the biggest area as well. Is so. there a lot of uh, Workshop stuff already? Or no, it's only just come out, so um, no. But you know, there's, there's not a great deal there to do at the moment. But it, you know, I say it's, it's a laugh. It's fun for for uh, an hour or so. So you know, people can get some enjoyment out of it at least. Yeah. Is it at all like uh, Octodad? Similar type of thing. You know, it's, it, yeah, the, the physics are a bit rubbish and it can be quite hard to control. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's one of those games that's meant to be a joke. Um, I would be if the developers were pretending it was a proper game, then you know I yeah. wouldn't like that. But they are they're saying that there's bugs in it. It's meant to be a joke. So you know, intentionally crap. It is. Seven yeah. pounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs>